Hi, my name is Dwight Dively. I'm the Director of the Office of Performance Strategy and Budget here at King County. I've been doing this for about eight years. Um, I'm going to talk about the upcoming budget process that we have for 2019 and 2020. As most of you know, the county uses a biennial or a two-year budget process. Um, our biennium starts with January 1 of each odd-numbered year, so we're currently starting to work on the budget for 2019 and 2020. The way the schedule works is we will, are getting uh, budget proposals from departments at the end of June. We will work over the course of the summer with the county executive to review those proposals. He will submit his proposed budget to the county council on September 24th, and the county council will adopt a budget sometime in mid-November that will go into effect in January. Uh, what the budget provides is funding for a variety of efforts that we do around the county. The current biennial budget is a little over $11 billion and we have about 14,000 employees in King County. My expectation is as we put together the 2019-2020 budget that we'll actually see that budget grow somewhat. Uh, and we'll have uh, areas where we've added staff and added services in order to serve our public. One of the things that is not understood much about our budget is that because largely of state laws, our funding is constrained into particular areas. So we really have about a hundred budgets, each with their own revenues and expenditures, and we don't have the ability to move money around how the elected officials would like to do. So for example, if we have money in our parks levy, we can't move that to pay for human services. So putting together this budget is actually a very complex endeavor. We have a couple of funds that have significant financial challenges as we get into 2019 and 2020. The first of these is our general fund. The general fund is the county fund that provides traditional services of county governments in Washington state, mostly things in the criminal justice system such as the jail, the prosecutor's office, public defense, the courts, and the sheriff. We are also responsible for paying for election costs, for assessment of property, and for some things in public health and human services. The general fund has been limited for almost two decades now because of legal restrictions on its largest revenue source, which is the property tax. Under Washington state law, we can increase our property tax revenue only by about 1% per year, and we get to add new construction to that. Our costs typically are growing 3 or 4% per year, despite all the efforts of county employees to manage that cost growth. So you can see that every two years we have a dilemma. Our revenue is not keeping up with the cost of continuing to deliver the services we have to deliver. As of today, we have about a $25 million deficit in our general fund for the next two year period. That's out of a total of about $1.5 billion. So we will be working with general fund agencies to find efficiencies and in some cases, unfortunately, service reductions in order to balance the general fund budget. And that problem is going to continue until we can fix the revenue system for counties. The other fund that has some financial challenges is our public health fund. Public health depends a lot on state and federal funding. Um, over the years, the state funding has not increased at anywhere near the cost of uh, providing health uh, services, and federal funding has actually significantly decreased over the years. So public health has a challenge that it has less revenue growth and again, strong demands for its services. So we will be working with public health uh, on their budget uh, for 2019-2020. Most of the other funds of county government are in good shape and we're gonna be looking at at least sustaining if not even expanding the services that they provide. Um, one other interesting feature of the 2019-2020 budget is the executive is going to propose three major reorganizations of agencies and budgets for King County. The first is the county executive has decided that Metro Transit needs to be its own department. Uh, Metro Transit is by far our largest function. It also serves the largest number of our residents and the executive believes it needs to be a departmental level organization. As part of that department, we're also going to be moving the Marine Division out of the Department of Transportation and combining it with Metro Transit. The second departmental change is to create a new Department of Local Services, which will provide services to the residents of what we call the unincorporated area or the area outside of cities. Uh, this will combine the Road Services Division from the Department of Transportation and the Department of Permitting and Environmental Review. 
We'll also add a few other functions from other county agencies to create a one-stop shop for residents of our unincorporated areas. As part of that transition, we'll take two divisions out of the existing Department of Transportation, the Airport and the Fleet Services Division, and move those to the Department of Executive Services. The third organizational change is to create a new Human Resources Department by elevating the existing Human Resources Division out of the Department of Executive Services and making it its own department. The County Executive believes that Human Resources is a critical function across the entire government and deserves to be a cabinet level department.